the Honourable Member for Hiri. Thank you, uh, Acting Speaker. Uh, Acting Speaker, before I um, raise my question to, without notice, the Minister responsible for intergovernment relations, or shall I say provincial and local level governments, I also um, acknowledge the presence of my constituents in the uh, Speaker's Gallery this morning. Mr. S Acting Speaker, as a way of brief background, the organic law on the provincial and local governments reform was uh, done in 1995, whereby a, a government structure was realigned and the premiers were, re uh, were replaced by governors and local level governments were incorporated into that organic law, the constitutional law. Thereby, under Section 98 and 99 of the, that particular law, the local level governments, presidents, and the provincial governments were given a seat at the table of natural resource allocation. Whilst the provincial governments and, uh, are engrossed, and I say the governors are very much engrossed in this development agenda of benefit distribution, and therefore privy to the execution of contracts pertaining to development um, aspirations of the project area footprint. The LLG is also, although probably sign off, I'm not, I have not seen one since though, will find themselves in a particular predicament that is a subject of much dis, uh, debate and discussion amongst uh, members of parliament who are related to project area footprint areas. Mr. Acting Speaker, Somewhere along the line, the, as a matter of timeline, in 20, 1995, this reform was done. In or about 2010, the, for, for example, the, the PNG LNG gas project agreements were signed off. In 2014, the PNC-led government brought in the DDA Act, which gives great, uh, gives and recognizes districts as development machineries. Since that day to now, there has been a lot of tussling. In 2014, that act was passed. This year, I am informed and verily believe that in 2022, a, a, a Hiri SPA, for instance, now instead of the LLGs receiving benefits, the Hiri local level government SPA, for instance, and there are many other SPAs who purport to replace the function and duty Honorable, of L LLGs. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, we have problem of uh, raising more comments on the questions, and we delay our question time. And Thank you. I'll get time, to the so questions very we'll quickly. Get straight to your question. Mr. Speaker, in 2022, I said earlier, in 2023, substantial sums of money were paid to the Hiri SPA. I'll use that as an example. These funds, and the questions that arise are these. Can the minister, the good minister, produce a report uh, of the audit of these funds that have been uh, delivered or distributed to the SPAs? Hiri SPA being one, and there are many others. But for my sake, the Hiri SPA is of great concern. Is the good minister also able? to produce, a report, in that report, explain the mandate of the SPAs, its functions and purposes, what it is there to do, and why is it functioning in place of LLGs. Meanwhile, we have the DDAs established and supposedly the development machinery that has been sitting there not being utilized, who are more accountable, who are more in the public realm, who actually report to the DRD. Mr. Speaker, is it true also that in the recent payments received by the Hiri SPA, instead of roads being fixed and health aid posts being attended to and uh, water supplied to each of these rural communities being attended to, brand new motor vehicles have been purchased by directors of these so-called Hiri SPAs? Is it true? Is it also true, therefore, that the way forward could be 
and we, we look at the existence of these uh, special purpose authorities. What is so special about these special purpose authorities? Like to speak of, in finality, I want to ask the good minister also to uh, respond to the various queries raised and the progress on possibility of amending sections 98 and 99 of the organic law on provincial and local governments so as to enable members of parliament who are granted great mandate by the people of each respective constituent to represent and advocate and push the development aspirations. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The Honourable Minister for Intergovernment Relations. Uh, thank you, Acting, Acting Speaker. I, I thank the Honourable Member for Hiri Koyari for this very, very important question. He has uh, raised, and this is a very important question because of uh, SPAs. It's not only applies to uh, Hiri Koyari case, but throughout Papua New Guinea where um, project relating to uh, oil and gas, as well as uh, uh, gold and copper, in which SPAs exist to provide services to our people. And I, I am really, really thankful that a member has asked this question, because this is issue that I have uh, taken upon myself to address. For a very long time, there has been no reports being submitted by SPAs throughout Papua New Guinea. And so much rumors or stories about so much funds, hundreds of millions of funds have disappeared through the SPAs, whether they're, they're existing SPAs, whether they are legally established, whether they are um, endorsed by landowners or LLGs. SPAs are instruments established by by government, basically uh, to do with agreements between developers as well as PNG government. And SPAs were or are the vehicles by which uh, landowner benefits are channeled through. And as I said, it has been a major problem so far. Let me now answer question relating to Hiri, and then I can come back and address the issue that has been uh, a, a problem area for us. Uh, yes, let me start with the last question. The question the Honorable Member asked is to do amendment to uh, Section 98 and 99 of Organic Law, which hinders or who, which prohibited uh, open members to participate in terms of sharing of benefits. And often cases we find that uh, development projects exist in districts. By the operation of law, open members are, are prohibited from sharing these benefits. Hence, the problem that has been raised by member for Koyari Hiri. In answer to that question, yes, I have directed my, my officers, particularly legal division, to immediately look in that amendment to Section 98 and 99 of Organic Law, enabling open members to have stronger say in the benefit deriving from the resources from the districts that represent. So that issue is underway. As it applies to Hiri Koyari, particularly Hiri LLG, Hiri LLG has uh, undergone lots of uh, difficulties. I've seen the file. When it was established, the board has gone through different phases of um, people pushing themselves in and replacing the earlier boards, and that problem has existed for some time. And in the vacuum, the funds that have 
come in from the developers to the national government, which were given for Hiri LLG, were then parked with central provincial government. You can imagine what has happened to those funds. So much funds have disappeared. Okay, there are some projects that have been done, but all in all, lots of funds have disappeared. It's the same story all over Papua New Guinea. Recently, about a month ago, out of concern, I had issued secular instructions asking all SPAs to provide their financial and operational reports as far as how fights can go. Out of 14 LLG SPAs, eight responded. And I have received their reports. Some reports I'm going through it and I'm not satisfied because the report does not talk about how funds were used. So I'll be dealing with those uh, SPAs. Included in that discussion was Hiri Koyari SPA. Up until now, I have requested for Hiri Koyari to give me report of their operation. They have not done so. So thank you, uh, member. I'll be seeking that in, uh, information from uh, Hiri Koyari to give account of all the funds they have received and how they have expended. I can tell you, because I have a personal interest in Hiri, particularly as he applies to um, LLG, sorry, LNG area, because of my association with the, with the, the project uh, side uh, areas because of my, my marriage to the family. So I've been concerned about this particular, particular well, we are all married, so I need to talk about that. Anyway, so it, it is kind of a personal concern for me as well. Currently, I've been told, though I have not seen the figures, but I think uh, in the vicinity of about 17 million has been made available to Hiri uh, SPA, LLG SPA. And I will be demanding from the management and the board of uh, Hiri LNG uh, SPA to give me their operation of plants. You cannot, cannot uh, spend money unless you have plan. If you don't have plan, you abuse the money. It's right across the board. Whether it's a government, whether it's a private sector, we must have operational plan. So that is where the problem is, and I think that's the reason why and our, our member has raised a very uh, crucial issue, and that is perhaps where they are now spending the money to buy uh, expensive vehicles, and I'll make it my business to deal with this matter. But coming back to the uh, questions, I think some of the questions are already... already uh... Honorable Minister, we have limited time for question time, so... I would ask okay. you to thank, give a thank short you. response to that question. Thank you. Uh, as I said, I will uh, I'll make it my business uh, member to check Hiri, Hiri, Hiri SPA, and then I will report back to you. Thank you.